Yo, what's going on guys today? Gonna be a walkthrough, a loadout video, a setup video to show you all my GBF setups I'm currently using. I'm not showing all of them because that'd be like a two hour video. However, I'm gonna show the ones that I use like daily-ish so you guys can get an idea of the setups I'm going through and what the one I'm building and the ones I'm working on and some things that I am currently doing. Now, I will also have a image link where you can go down and look at the actual pools in uh, picture form that'd be totally up to you if you want to go there and i also have a document where i'm showing the weapons i'm currently in the process of farming so you guys can know how i'm farming I also keep track of gold bars as well so you guys can get an idea of how the gbf farm is going for me with that let's get started on the setups so we're going to go through as many as possible. I'm going to take a break between it because I don't want it to, this video is going to probably take like 30 minutes. This forewarning, it's going to, it's going to take a while. So with that, uh, I'm going to take a break between it. The first setup we're looking at is Bahamut high level. Now I have two Bahamut high level setups. This Bahamut high level setup is more for my stream where I focus to be safe, still have good damage, but I'm more focused on being safe rather than maximum damage. With the setup, I'm running Kalulu, six, Zoe. Zoe's job is to get us to a midi, uh, one health, and then die from death. So that's Zoe's pure job in both comps. Six is here because his skill three does lower the boss's accuracy, which does help around 70. Um, Earth Crash can't kill a unit instantly, generally your main character. Kalulu will live it because her lethal hit and Six has to dodge. So what you're really trying to pr protect is your main character. So Six's job is to protect my main character from dying. Generally in runs that um, I don't know the host, I don't care if my main character dies. However, with people I do know, I want to keep my main character alive. So that's why I bring Six. Um, Let's talk about the weapon pool. I am running Highlander here. Uh, Highlander is a little bit better due to the higher damage cap than a full Gisela grid. If you're playing at very low health, which I generally do end up playing at. But if you're playing at very, very low health, then you want to run Highlander. Unless your Gisela grid has a couple Vagabonds. One Vagabond, from my experience, is not enough. You need at least two to three. So for it to beat out Highlander at low health. And for the Opus, you can see the Opus here. I'm running Mac and Opus, a MIDI, um, skill cap up. Works well. Uh, have a Magna Claw here as well. There's no other weapon really. <laughs> if there was another weapon, I would replace it, but there's nothing else you really want to run. Then we have Zeus. Um, you can also run Justice. That's personal preference in my opinion. Um, this account doesn't have justice and I have no plans on making it right now. So, yeah. Uh, you have the Prime Mark for Dark, the Arcarim Summon for Dark because death to kill off Zoe, and we have Bial. Bial is the supplemental damage, more damage, really bonus, really benefits soldier builds a ton and works really well with Kalulu. So, it will be four star. Probably by the time this video goes up, actually. So let's keep that in mind that it will be a four star by the time it comes up. The, the video goes up. As for skills, I'm running Clarity, Revive. Clarity is for the ability to clear Ragnarok field and any debuffs, depending if the run has break lock or not. Unfortunately, people on my stream don't know how to break lock. <laughs> uh, so you gotta bring Clarity. And revive um, is for just reviving whoever dies. Sometimes, you know, Earth Crash can kill a unit. Hopefully not my main character. So it's good to have the revive because I'm not really focusing on pure speed, but I'm more want to be safe. But that's for like my co-op host and my stream. Now for the real Bahamut high level team. This is I don't care. I want damage. Damage. So you bring Sakura dropping six because Sakura has the ability of not attacking. And when she's at one health, she can't attack the heal. And it will allow her to die from Ragnarok field at the very beginning of the fight, leaving me with only two units being main character and Kalulu. 
Zoe is still going to get deft, so this is the best way to go to two units quickly. You cannot run three units with Zoe because death will not affect her if she's in slot three. You need her to be in slot four here, so that's why you have to bring Sakura. But yeah, the whole point of this is main character Kalulu mass turns a lot. The weapon pool stays the same. Um, Highlander is perfectly fine. Summon pool stays the same. I actually prefer Zeus here because you're going to see why classes I'm bringing is the skill. It's actually splitting spirit and self-reflection. There's no clarity and you're very reliant on somebody else to clarity you. If no one clarities you, you're going to have to keep calling Zeus. Now, the reason that you don't bring clarity is because it's a waste skill. You, you, you lose damage uptime by calling clarity. So... That's why you don't do it. Let let one of the other players clarity for you so you can keep hitting the big orange button. Now, self-reflection is only here because chain burst is a no burst. You don't want no burst. Chain burst is a DPS loss. You're waiting for that burst to finish when that could have been a hit the big orange button again. So you hit, best off hitting this skill, then hitting orange button, then chain bursting and waiting for that chain burst to finish. Splitting Spirit is just there in case you, for some reason your main character ends up dodging the um, Ragnarok field. If you didn't know, inherently your main character does have a chance of dodging debuffs with the 3% dodge. So Splitting Spirit to there for when your main character does dodge, you can still lower your main character's health bar. The support skill for Soldier does not matter for both classes, by the way. You can bring whatever you want. You don't even hit it. So it's just orange button attack. Orange button, orange button, orange button. That's it though for Bahamut High Level. Let's go over to Akasha. Now, Akasha, is, we're in a predicament here because this account does not have Solemn. And not having Solemn does hurt quite a bit because she does a ton of damage and her skill three is pretty nutty. Not to mention her skill two. I've also heard that she worked really well with Rat in the combination for Akasha. However, I have not tried it yet. Um, I'm waiting to do Akasha after Guild Wars to check which element it's going to be. But uh, right now, I'm not really farming Akasha. I'll probably get back to it, though, eventually. The team here is going to be Kalulu, 6, Solemn would be here if you had her, Zoe, Nier. The reason for Nier is because one of the characters will end up dying eventually, and you come in with a free auto-revive. Auto -revive, and her skill 1 is pretty great, so... You're not killing Zoe off in this comp with death. You actually want Zoe to stay alive, cast skill two again. Because Akasha has turn skip, you get to cycle through skill two quite often. So with that, you really want Zoe to stay alive for as long as possible. Yes, I know, 2016 characters still being relevant, blah, 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 blah. Other than that, that works pretty well. You also have the Highlander grid again, surprise, surprise. Now. Because this fight's on LE, you do drop the Celeste Claw for a Seraphic weapon, so you get the on LE damage boost. Hopefully, they omit these weapons in the future, but um, yeah. Getting that on LE damage boost is such a big thing. The summons, they generally stay the same. The only difference is that you bring in Shiva for a burst with Nier. With her skill 1, it's not bad to just drop Shiva. Thanks to Akasha having turn skip, you bring up Shiva quite quickly and it could be a good burst at like 10 or something it's not bad the skills you're bringing is blitz burst because it comes with a quick ogi to desync your ogies allowing your to cycle turns quicker you don't want to chain burst with this comp again so having blitz burst does help a lot when desyncing your ogi splitting spirit again for desyncing your ogi and revive for if any of these characters end up dying again uh, you don't really use revive, but it's there for like a backup plan if the run's like really, really bad. But honestly, with this setup, you'll hit 1.4 mil before you even need revive. Unless the run has no debuffs. Then yeah, okay, maybe pretty bad. The next setup we're looking at is the Yubaha high level. Now, this is the dark variant. Um, tell me how you guys feel about me going over other Ellie's. Um, like light, wind, water, earth and all of them i can test the ones that i know about in terms of speed comps but the one i currently use myself is dark right now so uh give me feedback tell me how you guys feel about it 
As for magmas, I do plan on doing a magna variant of this in the future, but I'm still farming magna grids, so we'll see how it goes. But with you Baja High Level, I'm actually running BK over Kalulu in the front row because I bring in Kalulu from the back row and she runs it to the 25. My fault, the 95. I think it may be better to run Kalulu in the front row. I have to test it though, but I don't really try too hard in Yubaha High Level. So um, what I'm currently doing right now with having BK in the front, though I don't know what's like super optimal, but yeah. But so I, I turn one Zoe, skill two, death Zoe, and generally it'll have Kalulu come in after Phalanx and she can run it to the 95 to take a huge damage loss. Then I push it to half health. Then I activate skill three to put her to uh, even lower health quickly and see that red by turn two. Now that's how I do it personally. Um, is that optimal? I don't know, but it, it allows Kalulu and everyone else to be really low health by turn two. Nearest to come in at the end of the fight are around 50-ish, 40-ish to come in and just drop her, her, her skill one and be ready to skill three at the end. Also, she, she gets auto revive to the party so you can play very nutty with her. Like, auto revive, undispellable is like the most broken thing in this game. I can't believe they gave it to a character. The more I've been playing with Dark, the more I just, I just find it to be straight insanity that she has the ability to give your whole team auto revive. That has to be the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. It just, it blows my mind. The more I use her, the more I see this character just come in and just like, I like I turn my brain off. My Whatever brain power I was using, it just completely just goes off. Now for the grid, I'm actually running a full Gisela grid here. The reason I, I prefer the Gisela grid is because one, generally Yubaha does not have debuffs. Depending on the run, if you have a ton of fast players in there, there's no debuffs. And because there's no debuffs, you want to have a little bit more raw damage. Secondly, is that you're not playing at very, very low health like Yubaha. I'm not like Bahamian high level. And because you're not playing at very, very low health, um, I prefer to have Gisela's more overall damage than the uh, higher damage cap. I do go for a little bit of damage cap here. As you can tell, I put the cosmic weapon in here. But that's just me. And you have BK Sword for Nier mainly because Nier is going to come in with full health. Uh, if you're lucky, you can try to lower her health from the 50 and the 40. But generally, she comes in with full health and it kind of feels a bad moment. So maybe she can crit. Who knows? <laughs> Magna Opus again because Magna Opus OP when you have multiple Gisla. Karen Bow and the Palm Tree. I like the Palm Tree. Because I take turns without Phalanx and no debuffs. And Baja can... It can do damage to you when you, it has no debuffs. And it triple attacks, okay? Even with Dark, I take about... If it triple attacks me, it probably take like 10k or something. Which is quite a bit. When you have only 20k health. Uh, the summons stay the same. The only difference is that I bring Typhon. Typhon is for the last bit of the fight. Where you Typhon with near skill 3. Getting a 5 Ogi Chain. It's a really good way to end the fight. Um, good burst. About two, 250k. Uh, sometimes 300k, depending. Depending on, like, a couple things. If you chain a Baja, Shiva, um, counters. But it, it's good. It's good. Next, we're on the first Bunko grid of this video, which will be a Hector grid. Now, this Hector Grid is not optimized fully. Be oh, I didn't speak about something. The skills for Yubaha is Revive, Harden Shield, and Substitute. Just throwing it out there. Um, they're pretty standard, but uh, I thought I'd mention it. But anyways, um, the Hector Grid is not optimized. Uh, this is Hector's Strike Time right now. The reason you can tell it's Strike Time is because I have Nier. So, with Nier, what I do is I bring Hades Kirin. And I use near skill three on Kalulu, dual arch on main character, then activate Kirin and throw it um, near skill three on six. If you have Solemn, she would be perfect in this slot because you can activate her skill one, and I believe that's about 12 million damage from her alone. How is that fair? I don't know. No, actually, more than 12 million. She does like what, six mil on Ogi, four mil on Nuke. 
something absurd. But he does quite a ton of damage, but not on the account right now, so I end up sparking her later down the line. But that's currently what I'm doing for Hector right now. It works pretty well. It's about 400k at maximum damage. So it's not too bad in one turn. Um, obviously, I would like more. But hey, we got to take what we get. We could. We got to take what we got. It's not 500k. Unfortunately, with Solemn, you can hit 500k no problem. But make do. But that's for strike time. I'm going to show you the pool here. Uh, two Fallen Swords, Opus. Um, the Zeno. This Opus should be Stamina for Optimize. However, because I've been doing a lot of Fa, I've decided to run the LE damage over time. But if you're purely farming Hector, I recommend going Stamina. BK Source, Seraphic, uh, Avatar Staff for Cap Up, Kirin, uh, Fairy Tarp for more Cap Up, and Anubis Weapon for more Cap Up. Summons stay the same. You put in Baja for more stats. Because you're generally not going to call any summons anyway. Other than Karen. Now, if you're doing a non-strike time variant. Where you're just coming in for a less regular content. Let's say uh, no strike time. You run how long. And what you would do is you bring in Claris. If you didn't know, Claris increases your charge bar speed. For your main character. And because you increase your charge bar speed for main character. You're able to hit um 100 charge bar by just hitting her skill two so when you hit her skill two you get a full chain and you just hit attack and it's about 23 million which is 230k which is more than enough to get red box with hector now i know everyone not everyone has claris so i understand but the setup i'm running you also need charlotte in the back row because um with claris skill two she gives you 35 Charlotte gives you five, adding up to 40. Next, we have Uwu. Uwu, because uh, this class is super derpy, and um, it's all about abusing the near comp. If you have not seen this, I've done it quite a bit on my videos. Um, it's pretty overpowered, really overpowered, actually. But the whole idea of this setup is to kill near with death. If you kill near by any means than her passive, she activates a buff on the player and the boss that lowers your defense to the maximum, which is 50. Then afterwards, it um, also stops healing for both you and the boss. The reason that's so broken is because it's a character who drops your health to one, then heals you. But you're not healing because of near. Therefore, you stuck at one health and oh, there's a, a weapon skill that gives you damage based on how low your health is. And it's the strongest mod in the game. And when you combine that with Nier's skill one field, getting bonus damage and damage up, you tend to see some really big numbers. So that's the whole idea of this comp. The reason I'm running the Gisela Grid and not Highlander for the higher damage cap is because because the damage is so high on the setup, you can actually run Hades Shiva with good results. Yes, a fire summon. I know, crazy. May sound absurd, but you can run a fire summon on your dark team, still cap. So the reason I'm running Gisela with, instead of a Highlander, it's because I wanna maximize the damage. This is for off Ellie, by the way. For on Ellie, you would probably drop the Vagabond or a strafic weapon. But this is like for like Yubaha, um, the very common five man Yubaha team. I'm actually probably do a video on it in the future, but the five man Luchador Yubaha, very common, um, bursting off LE, stuff like that. It can also be used in Yubaha normal, can be used in Fa normal. So it's, it's not a bad setup at all. With that though, that's it for mainly the dark stuff. We're gonna be right back. Luckily for you guys, you know, I can edit it out, but I'm gonna be right back and then we'll come back with more. And we are back. Well, for you, it's, it was a minute, but for me, or a second, for me, it was like a lifetime. But first thing we'll be looking at is my Yubaha L. L stands for the lazy. 
this whole idea of this comp is to hit one button, get 200k honors, and let somebody else carry me. Sometimes when I do you Baja trains, more like all the time, I don't feel like putting in effort. Maybe you guys too, maybe not. But whenever I do you Baja train, I just want to hit one button, do a good amount of damage, and then let some fire guys just carry it. Now, I can do it myself, but that's too much effort. <laughs> Generally, when I do you Baja, I watch anime. Speaking of which, you know, if you watch any anime this season, leave it in the comments. People are probably going to be talking about this, so review thing, but you know, yeah. Uh, the whole idea of this comp is Uno, Vajra, Yoda, Bonito. You hit one button, and you hit attack. So you're going to be running the three harps, three balls, katana, thimble, the zeno, and the opus stamina. Skills in the main character don't matter because you're not hitting any skills. You're literally hitting only one button. So I'm not going to talk about skills. Summons is just water summons. You got Bonito, the whale, Varuna, uh, Moon because it has high stats, and Gabriel because damage cap up. Works fine. Back row could be anything. Skills can be anything. At that point, it's personal preference. I just don't care too much about it, personally. Now we have the try hard setup. So we have Strike Time, Warlock, Fire. Now, the reason it's Warlock is it works in two raids. You have Yubaha Normal, which is um, the 30-man edition. And then you have Fa High Level, the 30-man edition. The reason... It, that Warlock is very strong. You can get Chaser, bonus damage, combining with 80% bonus damage character, Shiva damage cap up, and Alanan skill 1 and skill 2, guaranteed TA. However, this only works during strike time. Personally, I don't use it at all because generally my strike time is not great for this. Um, the quality of train at the time my strike time goes up is not nearly as good as a train during Japanese peak hours, which I tend to do my trains at because they're faster. Yes, I generally do, I recommend anyone who wants to get speed instead of um, MVPs, you probably best doing them during Japanese strike time. Um, prime time, which is like, I believe, uh, 20 JST to 23 JST. During that time, that's like when people are the fastest, generally. Then we here have the, the pool, Bunch of katana weapons um, works works fine. Colossus cane, katanas, and a magna opus stamina. You'll cap no problem with Alan skill one. As for the skills on the class, we're bringing choke for choke is for fa thirty man, and chaser is for both um, Yubaha and um, fa. Summons is Michael because you know damage cap up. Sun, because skill three. I mean, Sun is pretty powerful. Bial and Baja for stats. Next, we're on to my next bunker grid, which is for Moregna, which I'm currently farming. Now, you may notice that Esther's here. Esther's not optimal. Um, however, because my pink is not the fastest, I don't have time to be hitting the 80% damage characters um, skill one. So generally, I opt to just run Esther because it's generally dead by the time I'm hit tag team and then auto. It's not enough time to hit like Alanan skill two, Alanan skill one, call Shiva, hit tag team, then hit auto. By that time, the boss generally is dead. So that's just my ping though. Um, if you live closer to Japan, maybe you could do more, hit more skills and stuff like Shiva skills two and stuff, but I just can't. So I just gotta optimize what I have ping wise the pool here is the um ganjin goza fist or whatever his name is then you have four katanas um zeno magna opus suzaku for damage cap up and cosmic katana for cap up with the prime mark because on ellie more recognized defense is not the highest sun michael bial and baja very common comp you probably keep seeing this where i run the prime mark the primal um, my father Primark, the Arkham Summon, Bial, and a Baja. Back row doesn't matter here. Now we on to my Gilgamesh comp. Gilgamesh, um, this comp, I'm still working on it. Gilgamesh is a really weird boss because it clears itself at 50. 
kind of similar to the whale. Um, because they clear at 50, they actually end up being longer. So, from my experience. So, I actually end up doing two Ogies with this comp. That is how I end up doing it. I run Chrysler with this comp. So, what I do is I RM Flow into Dual Arts. Then, if the run's slow, I call Freyer. If the run's fast, I don't call Freyer. Then, uh, by the time my cooldown's off, I can call How Long, then Ogie again. So this setup I'm running here, we have Siete, Lyra, Vera. Vera because she has a nuke on her Ogi. Um, you can also use Monica or something. I don't know who's better right now. I'm still testing. Uh, I'm not really farming Gilgamesh too hard, but I'm still testing. Weapon pool, we have Rosetta's Daggers. It's the Zeph pool. Um, notice that there's no Sky Ace. Currently, I have not borrowed the Sky Ace. I don't plan on borrowing it. Between now and anniversary, I'm going to save up every gold bar I get and hoard them. So that's my game plan. But yeah, we have the Magna Opus, the Grimnir Spear for stamina, two of the weapons for the charge bar speed, and they're not bad EX weapons and the damage cap up. Not to mention we have Zeph, Bial, Judgment, uh, Freyr, if the run's slow, and Raphael. Now we are on to, the back row does not matter by the way. We are on to um, Prometheus. Prometheus is quick. It's generally a one button comp, but if the run's kind of slow, you can even call Greya skill two and maybe skill one up for quick burst. Um, generally you have enough time for this Greya skill two though, because you know, it's a, it's a, it's a very quick skill. So you have more than enough time to hit it. We have Uno, Vajra, Greya, the same Ogi build. However, I dropped the Fimble for the Mackie Axe Up because Promethea has low defense and generally has a couple of debuffs. So you're able to cap relatively easily on Prometheus. Same everything else though. Nothing else really changed. Back row could be anything because Prometheus does not matter. Bony Toe set up again. So it's, it's the same stuff. Main character skills, however, are actually are relevant. If your strike time, you can hit no more doubt and rendering flash for a little bit more damage. Um, if it's not strike time though, it's not worth the effort. And this party is currently a work in progress. I don't know what's for right now, but right now it's a work in progress. Now the last party we're gonna be looking at are my current GW EX plus parties. As a keyword, it's current. They're not going to be my end goal for each LD right now, but these are the current ones I use at the moment. You may see came there, but came video eventually. Just not right now. The first party we're looking at is fire. Now you may be looking at the octo in here. I know he looks like why why you have an octo here. He's very important for this comp because of what I have. Now, there's a weapon for old players who've been playing this game for the last couple of years. There's an SR Katana that came during the, um, some collab event with like a bunch of boys. I don't remember what it's called, but it's a bunch of men that look pretty, that girls like, and it came with an SR Katana that gave 10% charge bar boost. However, this account does not have it, unfortunately. Therefore, we have to improvise. I'm running um, Octo because the way it works is that you run how long in this comp. If you didn't know, Eternal start off with 70% charge bar thanks to the uh, Eternal Wonder. If you get all 10 Eternals, you get a Wonder effect. The Wonder effect gives them the 10% charge bar boost. So how it starts off is that you take how long on your comp. So main character starts with 60% charge bar. Octo starts off with 70 Esther starts off with 70, Lyra starts off with seven, uh, 60. You use RM Flow, that's 40% charge bar to your main character. Then you activate Dual Arts. Then you hit Attack. Dual Arts procs two Ogies on your main character, giving everyone 20% charge bar. However, Octo gains 40% charge bar, so his 70 goes to 110. Esther goes to 90 because he only gets 20. Lyra goes to 80. 
Now Octo Kenogi giving Esther 10 charge and Lyra 10, and then these two Kenogi after. That only works because of Octo though. Now, you're probably saying it's now like a lot less damage. No, not really because the main character does 10 mil by himself because this weapon is strong, you nuke a ton, and you have a higher nuke cap thanks to the weapon, not to mention that it does nuke. So it's pretty good. Now, there's another comp I do end up making in the future, which is gonna be running Kango and the class weapon for Kango, where the whole point of it is to use Tsubasa skill two. Is this still Tsubasa skill two? Let me check. I forget, is it skill two or skill three? But he used one of his skills to give charge bar speed. You give 30% charge bar to all fire allies. And with Kango class weapon, if you didn't know, increase your charge bar speed by 50. So his skill three will give 45 to your main character, allowing everybody to Ogi from just a main character. Now that's what I plan on doing in the future. But right now, um, I gotta farm the weapon. Also gotta farm EMPs. That's like for when I want a one button with fire. Let's see my game plan for the next fire GW. But that's about it. Uh, weapon pool is here. Four katanas. You probably know that the Shiva bow is not full limit break. You don't need it to be full limit break for the sentence skill, which all I'm using it for is this. The crit doesn't matter to me. Sentence is all you cared about. Now, if you can full limit break it, it'll be preferred because you get skill level 15. But I'm not spending bars on that. So it's whatever. We have the Magna Opus here and this. Colossus gun because it has sentence skill. So you have a higher 10, yeah, 10 percent extra from that. Not bad. The same summons as always though. Next we're on to the water comp. Hit Bonito. It dies. That's it. A 21 million. Bonito. Three balls, three harps. The Zeno Harp, the um Opus and Primark and Ultima Katana. Same summons, nothing changed. This hit bony toe is dead. Now, that's the, not the fastest comp, I don't think. Um, they're probably a really, really fast comp with Altair. However, uh, I haven't really thought of it yet, but I think it's a fast comp with Altair that can do 21 million. His skill three is faster than calling bony toe, but I'm not trying that hard yet. Maybe when it comes to around water time, I'll think about it and see if I can get 21 million out of that, but currently it's not a priority for me. What is a priority to me is though, it's Vashiraga right now. This is why I've been talking about farming rings with Akasha, it's because I need a ring for Vashiraga so that he can hit his damage cap in this comp. As I just mentioned with the charge bar speed up on the fire build, it's the same premise. You're using Vashiraga skill three that gives 30% charge bar to get the charge bar speed up from the Kango build with this katana, giving you 45. And having Octo Ogi twice though. If you didn't know, Octo gets double charge bar speed. So with the 30, he gets 60 from Vashiraga. Then he gets a ton from the main character speed up. And main character Ogi, Vashiraga, Ogi, and Alex gets him to 200 quickly. So that's the main problem. That's like the fastest build right now, I think, for this. You could also call Ural with it. Um, the only problem with calling Ural is a lot slower than calling Vashiraga. And the pool is Kaim. A Kaim pool. Uh, I think you can do it perfectly fine without Kaim, but uh, Kaim just has the higher damage cap. So the higher damage cap does help a ton. And back row, you do need Kaim. So if you don't have Kame, it's gonna be a lot harder. And you have the Urel, Bial, Baja, and Hankman. Keep in mind this is running how long as well. This comp is running Varina, and this comp is running how long. The, the skills don't matter if you don't hit them. Next comp we have is Wind. Now, the fastest comp would be the exact same, but you run Catzelia, who gives 30% charge bar. Unfortunately, he's an invoker. So I have, and I have no plans of making that character anytime soon. So when it's going to be kind of hard to get a one button comp for, but this current comp is just the normal Arum flow into dual arts into Ogi 21 million. 
I put Monica here instead of Lyra because Monica has a nuke on her Ogi, can dodge the dodge after the trigger and nuke again, and she needs EMPs. So mainly it's just for EMPs. And Vera is, you know, cute. Same pool as the pool for Gilgamesh. Um, I don't have any plans of barring the Sky Ace right now. Maybe in the future though. Same summons too as the Gilgamesh. Just that you add Baja. Back row doesn't matter. And it's Arum Flow and Dual Arts. The other skill does not matter. And now we have another comp where we do the 30% charge bar combo again. You're probably going to keep noticing that I keep doing the 30% charge bar. This time we have John who gives 30% charge bar to Kango. Everybody Ogi is the same thing. Wombo combo. Just to pull Katana again. So yes, you're going to end up having to make this Katana for each Ellie to abuse this. Which is really annoying on Katana stones, right? But it works it really fast. So you have three Edens, two Certs. Um, because this account does not have Metatron, you do need two of them, unfortunately, and Zoe's Gun, because it does not have Metatron. If you have Metatron, you don't need it, but it don't have Metatron, so we gotta improvise. Feels bad. Um, Magna Opus again, because three Edens is good enough. And then we have the Zeno Coral Gun and this uh, Strafic Weapon. Same this time because we don't have Metatron, we bring double Baja. Cause Baja has the highest attack stat in the game and be out. And Silva is definitely required. If you didn't know, you can also increase Silva damage cap on her passive by increasing your skill cap on your main character. So what I actually do is run skill cap. If you're like ranked up, you can put the skill cap up on main character Kango to get a higher damage cap on Silva's passive. It's like 70 70k more damage but you have to be ranked 230 for that i believe and for the last comp for this video so before it gets too long we have the dark comp guess what we hit clara skill 2 and do the same thing the only difference is that claris gets 35 however claris does not need kango because he gets charge bar speed up to your main character but the last five you get from her. So you need Charlotte as well in order to get the 5% charge bar. But it works. So not bad, not bad. Uh, I wouldn't really change any of these characters either because Six has the passive, the counters and everything. So it's not bad. Now the grid can do some work. Uh, it's right now the carrying sword for the uh, dark defense down two fallen swords you want another one um just doesn't not on the count the count only has two right now it needs one more dupe to full limit break the third one and i have no plan to barring it then you have the black knight sword which is pretty okay this is a, this is a filler until i get another fallen sword two staffs for the higher damage cap fairy's heart for the damage cap the opus um you want the opus to be stamina if you can but uh yeah and ogi Seraphic and the Kirin Bow. Summon stayed about the same too. But that's about it for these setups right now. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I, as I mentioned before, I do have a sheet now where you can go look at my current setups right now. I covered the ones there. If you have any questions or if you want to see other setups for other content or if you want to see the Magna variant, uh, just leave in the comments. I'm still currently farming grids. You can see the grids that I'm currently farming in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching. This has been a freaking long video. I ain't doing this for a long time, at least a couple months. But thank you guys for watching, and till next time, peace out.